Hello everyone, welcome to Headway Civil Online Study. Hope by now the topics like soil formation, soil phase relationship is clear to you. Today we will be studying about the index properties of soil. In this video, we will learn about what is relative density and how to determine the specific gravity and water content for a given soil mass. So index properties helps us to identify and classify the soil mass. It involves properties like shape and size of particles, relative density and properties like consistency of soil. As we proceed with our discussion, the terms will become more clear to us. So first let us look at what do we mean by relative density. So the relative density indicates the degree of denseness and looseness of cohesionless soil. By cohesionless soil, here we mean to say is sandy soil which has got cohesion less that means it has got c value as 0 what is c c is the cohesion value so how do sandy soil attains its shear strength it attains its shear strength from phi value which is the angle of internal friction so we often consider cohesion less soil as phi soil so we can term cohesionless soil as phi soil because it attains its shear strength from phi value which is the angle of internal friction. So Id is represented as E max minus of E by E max minus E mean into 100. So what do you mean by E max? E max is the void ratio of the sand in its loosest state having a dry density of gamma d mean. E minimum is the void ratio of the sand in the densest state having a dry density of gamma d max and E is the void ratio under in situ condition having a dry density of gamma d. See if we consider the arrangement of the soil mass as some of these two arrangements. Say so this let it be number one arrangement and let this be number two arrangement. Okay. In the first arrangement we can see the void is more as compared to the second arrangement where voids are less. Right. So we can consider here the soil is in loser state and for this arrangement the soil is in denser state. So when we are considering the soil is in loser state that means we are getting the void ratio as maximum. So here will be the void ratio will be larger as compared to this where we can see the void ratio as minimum. Right now if we substitute the value of E equals to E max in this equation what we have what we will get is e if we substitute as equals to e max we'll get id which is the relative density equals to e max in place of e i'm substituted e max divided by e maximum minus of e minimum into 100 so this is coming out to be zero right so when id is equals to zero the soil mass is in loser state Right. And if we consider E is equals to E minimum, that is ID will come out to be equals to E max in place of E, I am substituting E minimum divided by E max minus of E minimum into 100. For here, the ID value will come out to be equals to 100 percent. So we can say the soil is in densest state for this criteria. Right. So E is equals to E min. So in this two diagram, when the E is equals to E max, we are getting the ID value as equals to 0. And here we are getting an ID value equals to 100 percent or we can say 1. So the question might come in the loser state, what will be the relative density of the soil mass and in the densest state, what will be the relative density of the soil mass. So we can here, we can write the relative density of the soil mass as 0 less than equals to id less than equals to 100 because its value can be 0 it can be 100 and it can range between any values between 0 and 100. So here if we get a density relative density index or density index as 0 to 15 we consider the type of soil as very loose from 15 to 50 we consider it as loose 50 to 70 we consider as medium dense 70 to 85 as dense and 85 to 100 we consider the soil mass as very dense so if i ask you 
say if my id value is equals to 60 percent what will be the type of soil so you can comment in the below section and give the answer so from the table you see what will be the type of soil and you comment okay now let us move on to another thing see here we have represented id in terms of void ratio we can also represent id in terms of dry density how see void ratio can we write this thing we know from the previous chapter in the soil phase relationship we have learned gamma d is equals to g into gamma w divided by 1 plus e right when the void ratio will increase that means what gamma d will decrease because gamma d is inversely proportional to e fine so when in this state in my first arrangement where we are having the e is equals to e max that means void ratio is maximum here what will be get is gamma d as minimum and in this case when we are getting e is equals to e minimum we will get gamma d as maximum so, and since it is inversely proportional so what we will get is in place of e max we will write 1 by gamma d min minus in the under in situ condition 1 by gamma d divided by 1 by gamma d mean again when it is e max minus 1 by gamma d max into 100 right remember both the formulas if you remember one you will be able to uh, calculate or you could be able to find out the other relation right next in the densest state and in the loser state when the soil mass for the given soil mass we can we have a certain value of the e okay so when e is equals to e mass we consider this value as equals to 0 0.91 and when e is equals to e mean we consider this value as 0 0.35 so the question may come like this what will be the ratio of the void ratios in the loosest and densest state so in the loose state we are getting 0.91 in the dense state it's 0.35 so if we divide 0.91 divided by 0.35 what we'll get is 2.6 so, I have written it down here. So, remember this for uniform spherical particles. What do you mean by uniform particles? That means particle comprise the soil mass comprising the particles of similar sizes. So, as you can see in this arrangement, the particle sizes are similar and are spherical in shape. So, uniform spherical particles, the ratio void ratio in the loser state and dense state is 2.6. That is, if we divide the void ratio of loser state, that is 0.91 by 0.35, we get it as. 2.6 right now moving on to the next portion that is the specific gravity what do you mean by specific gravity so specific gravity of a substance can be defined as mass of a certain volume of a substance divided by mass of same volume of water mass of certain volume of a substance divided by mass of same volume of water measured at a reference temperature of 4 degrees centigrade okay see if we consider i am giving you a container of a certain volume container and i ask you to fill it with the soil mass and take the weight of that particular soil mass you take it as w soil again i consider i ask you to fill that particular container with water and take this reading as w water so my g will come out as w soil divided by w water okay and it will be measured at 4 degree centigrade fine so in terms of specific gravity can be represented in terms of mass it can be represented in terms of weight or we can represent specific gravity in terms of unit weight how see unit weight we know what gamma is equals to weight by volume so can we write weight equals to gamma into volume right so in place of this weight we can write gamma of soil into volume of soil and in place of water we can write gamma of water into volume of water but specific gravity says that both the volume has to be same because we are considering the same container we are filling soil first with this in the same container and then in the next time we are filling water for the same container right so this volume of this will cut out so this will come out to be gamma of soil divided by gamma of water 
Now the question might come why we maintain a temperature of 4 degrees centigrade which is not possible to maintain in the laboratory. So, in the laboratory we generally maintain a room temperature which is 27 degrees centigrade. Okay. So, in few books you will find out this reference temperature is 27 and in certain books you will find the reference temperature is 4. But 4 is actually the perfect one because 4 degrees centigrade the water shows an abnormal behavior. This is an water abnormal behavior where you will find out which a term you will notice it is an anomalous expansion of water and at 4 degree centigrade you will find the density or we can say the unit weight of water as maximum right so its gamma d is max or we can say the density is maximum where rho of water at 4 degree centigrade is found out to be 1000 kg per meter cube or we can say this as 1 gram per cc right so that's the reason we consider the reference temperature as 4 degree centigrade Next moving on to how to determine the specific gravity of the soil solids. There are two methods how to determine it. Okay, we can determine the specific gravity by two methods. One is the hydrometer method and the one is the pycnometer method. Here for the soil solids, we will use pycnometer method. The pycnometer method is also termed as constant volume method. So what we take is, we take about 200 grams of dry sample. We take a 500 cc constant volume method. These bottles are often termed as density bottles or pycnometers. Okay, and we take distilled water. So, in the first case, we, we take the weight of the empty container that is W1. In the second case, we fill it with the oven dry soil and take the weight together, which is W2. And in W3 is the weight of the pycnometer plus soil plus water. And in the last case is the weight of the pycnometer plus water which is W4. Okay. So, we know specific gravity is the mass of dry soil by mass of equ equivalent volume of water. That means the same volume of water. So, mass of dry soil to get this what we will say this is the dry soil plus pycnometer. So, if we subtract W2 minus W1 what we will get we will get just the dry soil. So, it will be W2 minus W1. And for the water determination, what we'll do is W4 minus W1 because here we'll get just water since we are subtracting the pycnometer from this portion. So we'll get just water and we'll subtract the portion of water that is held in the soil mass. So that is W3 minus W2. So it will come out to be W4 minus W1 minus of W3 minus W2. In certain book, you will find this equation written somehow like this. It is written as W2 minus W1 divided by W2 minus of W1 minus of W3 minus W4. You remember both the, the both these equations are same. If you just remove the brackets, it will come out to be this only. Okay, so don't get nervous. The both the equation is same. Fine. Next, let us move on to how to determine the water content. So, what do we mean by water content? It's a ratio of weight of water divided by weight of solids right so remember by the pycnometer method which we determine specific gravity in the previous portion we can also determine the water content using the same method there are other methods as well in determining the water content which includes methods like oven drying method and oven drying method is the most accurate one for determining the water content is the most accurate although it's time consuming but accuracy wise is the best okay next we have got the pycnometer method we have calcium carbide method remember this helps us in the quick determination of water content this is a quick determination so, and it's a filled method there are other methods like sand bath method which is also a filled method torsion balance moisture meter method it's a lab method okay here infrared radiations are used so you might questions might be asked the method in determining the water content where infrared radiations are used are options may be the oven dry method pycnometer calcium carbide torsion balance moisture meter method so answer will be torsion balance moisture meter method next we have got alcohol method which is also a filled method right alcohol method remember it is generally not adopted for organic salts and salts that are containing the calcium compounds 
okay these are the small small questions you will find out of this all the methods the methods you need to remember or the procedure you need to remember is for the open dry method and pycnometer pycnometer i have already discussed in the previous section we will discuss what how to determine the water content using the oven dry method in oven dry method if i um, depict this in terms of dry gram it will become clear to you so in first case what we consider is we take a container with a lid on top okay we weigh this container as w1 in the second portion what we take is the container we take the soil mass whose water content we need to determine along with the lid of the container we weigh as w2 so this is the weight sample we have okay so we are taking as w2 and in the third portion what we do is we take the container and the oven dried soil sample this is the dry soil we consider with the lid on top we consider this weight as w3 so here you if you look at the procedure clean container with the lid is taken whose weight is w1 about 300 grams of weight sample is taken whose water content is to be determined let that weight be w2 the container with the soil sample first what we'll do when we are inserting this container in the oven we will just remove the lid okay its a uh, temperature is controlled of 110 plus minus 5 degrees and get this question might come in the exam what is the temperature that is maintained by determining the water content so the answer will be 110 plus minus 5 degrees centigrade so generally this text takes 24 hours to be completed but it depends generally on the soil particles for which soil we are doing the oven dry method for clay sample it takes about 10 to 15 hours for sandy sample 4 hours is generally required for drying but still we try to keep it for 24 hours okay so after taking out from the oven we cool the sample and then we weigh it what we get as w3 so since water content is weight of water so weight of water how to determine this is the water that is contained in the soil mass so if we subtract w2 minus w1 that is the weight of water will get right and weight of solids this is the dry solids plus container and this is container so we subtract w3 minus w1 will get the weight of the solids and water content is always represented in percentage so it's into 100 now pycnometer method the method is same as i discussed earlier just remember this formula how to determine the water content it's w2 minus w1 well where you will get the dry soil weight divided by w3 minus w4 will get the soil water content into g minus 1 by g minus 1 into 100 where g is the specific gravity so in the question if you are provided with the water contents of the pycnometer and you have been given the g value which is the specific gravity value you will be able to calculate what we know as the water content fine so i hope this much is clear to you in my next videos we will learn about the grain size distribution the curves the uniformity coefficient coefficient of curvature and other related things okay i need two more videos to complete this chapter of index properties of soil till then you study the portions which i have already taught you okay if you have any doubt comment in the below section or you can mail me at my mail id which i will be attaching with my video thank you for listening do comment, like and subscribe my videos for more updates. Thank you.